Thank you to everybody supporting Marlena Hollis Ministry. Your prayers, support, and sponsorship are invaluable. Together, we are making a difference. What are you doing as a part of this? Do you feel like you're a part of that? Do you feel like God is calling you into, into that new flow? Where he's saying, woman of God, it's time to rise up. See, there's an anointing that happens when you receive the Holy Spirit, okay? And that anointing is present with you at all times. Do you believe that? It's the word, say yes. We're like this tea bag, you know, we, we're like this cup of tea. Holy Spirit and circumstances kind of combine their efforts towards us. And we have this abiding place that we have to be in. We have to just keep hanging out here, just like this tea. Because this tea, it takes a little time. It's not gonna be ready as soon as I pour the water on it. It's gonna have to abide in the water. So I wanna ask you, as I'm just getting this out, this is some freebies, what's God asking you to do? Hmm. What's the Lord been talking to you about that maybe you're like, oh my gosh, I really don't wanna do that. It's really super big. If it's not bigger than you, then you're playing safe. And if you're playing safe, you're not playing with faith. Hmm. Just a thought, just a thought. Thought I'd just throw that out there. I'll try to be nicer. Um, but the things that God calls us to do is going to require lots of faith in this season. Do y'all believe that? Yeah. We're in a not play it safe season. I really believe that we're in a, a space in time where we talk a lot about seasons, but we've entered in a, a season, I believe, that is actually jumped into another era. It's a season within a new era. And I believe in that moment that right now he is asking women, specifically the women, to rise up. These people in Pakistan, you know why they're calling on me in this uh, female packaging? Because the, the men that I've partnered with that are ministers, they want to see the women rise up. Because they are, they've seen them be pushed down and oppressed. And they're tired of it. They know what the potential is for a nation if you can get that population to rise up and walk in who God's called them to be. So that's what we get to, to minister to, is those women. And I get to do that here, but I also minister to men and women. And I'm grateful for the privilege of that. But what are you doing as a part of this? Do you feel like you're a part of that? Do you feel like God is calling you into, into that new flow? Where he's saying, woman of God, it's time to rise up. It's time. You've been playing small. I want you to go to the big leagues. I want you to get out of the minor leagues. I'm a big baseball fan. You can hang out in the minor leagues and, and nurse your wounds and get better, but then it's time that you get called back into the major leagues. Some of you, it's time for you to get called up into the major leagues. It's your time, but it's up to you. So that's a freebie, and I'm gonna drink some water. <laughs> Okay, so I've got a lot of notes here. I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna teach you guys about tea. Does anybody drink hot tea? Yeah, oh, I know Karen, she's a big tea drinker. Yeah, Charlene brought out the tea when I ministered this before. She brought out like every kind of tea ever known to man. I was like, where did she get all that tea? I mean, was it like a collection? I didn't think you were drinking it. I think you were just buying it. <laughs> you know, you're like one of those people, yes, I drink coffee. And you're like, they hold the coffee. Yeah. Like the coffee massagers. <laughs> it's, it's like, you're not even real coffee drinkers. Okay, so we're going to talk about how to do some tea. So I'm going to ask for my beautiful mother to come up here, and she is going to... Um, bring me my teacup, because I'm, I'm gonna do a little demonstration. I'm gonna have to get back off the carpet for my demonstration, though I might have to come upstairs. 
All right, thank you, ma'am. I appreciate the tea. Oh, she's even got me a tea bag ready. Oh, a napkin. This is so fancy. Yes, it is. Oh my, and I got my water. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, awesome. Yes, yes, thank you, I love you. All right, I bet y'all would never know that was my mom. <laughs> Who would have thought? Okay, well, let's go ahead and I'm gonna just go back into the flow of prayer and just invite the Holy Spirit to speak what he wants to into the room and through this vessel. So, Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for just preparing our hearts. We prepare our hearts, God. Yes, Lord, we quiet our soul right now before you, God. We quiet our mind, our will, our emotions, God. In your presence, we thank you for speaking to us, God. Thank you for your word. It's so rich. It's so beautiful. And Father, thank you that it's so refreshing. God, I thank you for every woman in this room. I thank you, God, that as they've moved into this space, God, that today is their day. And I just pray a blessing over them as they receive the word from this vessel. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 All right, so let me let me see where I'm going to start here. I'm going to talk to you about some tea. So let's let's do that. So so here's a little bit of information about tea. To brew tea, you steep it in hot water, typically, right? Typically, hot water. Who steeps it in cold water? Who who does? Do you steep it in cold water? Yes. Okay, we'll talk about that too a little bit. But we we usually it's like hot water, right? It says, steeping is the process of extracting the flavor and health-promoting compounds from the solids used to make tea. So, steeping is the process of extracting the solids that are even oftentimes medicinal that's in the tea. This tea, I give each of you a tea bag when you come in because we're gonna talk about this tea. So, I've got my cute little cup, and I got my little tea bag in it, and I'm preparing. I'm gonna prepare some tea. I'll just set that there. I'm gonna move it a little closer so you guys all get to see my tea. Okay, I would have liked to have given you all a tea cup and a tea bag, but I gave you the tea bag. I, it really smells like an air freshener, I think your tea bag did. I'm so sorry. They were super cute. That's why I bought them. But I highly suggest you probably just put them in your car as an air freshener. I really believe that that's all they're good for. I tried one of them. I was like, oh my gosh. I felt like I was eating a flower, uh, drinking flower water. All right. So we know what then steeping is. Steeping is we're going to put the tea bag in, we're going to pour some hot water on, and I'm going to do that in just a little bit, but I want to talk to you a little bit first and get into the Word. So let's go to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. And we're going to start with verse 20. Yes, verse 20. Verse 20 of... 1 John chapter 2 says this, But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. Look how smart you are. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Let's skip down to verse 24. Therefore, let that abide in you. Underline the word abide. Unless you don't want to write in your Bible, just then look at it really hard. (laughs) Stare at it. Abide in you, which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. 
And you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Say out loud, abide. abide. Say out loud, I am anointed. My friend Tammy made me a t-shirt, and I was going to wear it tonight, but I actually just felt kind of fat, so I didn't wear it. <laughs> Don't y'all love how plain I am? I was like, I felt fat, so I didn't wear the t-shirt, and I also thought y'all would be distracted by the words, because it says the Holy Spirit makes me smart. How many of you have heard me say the Holy Spirit makes me smart? Okay. Holy Spirit makes us smart. Not just me smart, but Holy Spirit makes you smart, Right? The smart aleck part, he didn't do. <laughs> That's on my own. I didn't, I didn't need any help. I was born in, in that way. Um, but he says this. He says that, Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you will also abide in the Son and in the Father. So we, we're talking about this abiding See, there's an anointing that happens when you receive the Holy Spirit, okay? And that anointing is present with you at all times. Do you believe that? It's the word, say yes. yes. The abiding anointing is imparted deep inside of you, and it is not intended to leave. The abiding anointing abides in you, and therefore, when that anointing abides in you, you abide in the Father, the Father abides in you, the Son abides in you, you abide in the Son. So then the, that abiding anointing of the Holy Spirit is also able to teach you, guide you, lead you into all truths and all things. Do you believe that is the word we just read? But here's the thing about abiding. We're not great at it. <laughs> Let me tell you what abiding means. Abiding is to inhabit. Set up home. So the Holy Spirit wants to set up home, right? And then the Hebrew is yeshab. The Greek is me know, which I think is interesting, me know. Me know. Hmm, I don't want to wait. No, not me. Me know. That means I have to abide if I wait. And then it says to stay in, to stay in a given place, to stay in a given state, to stay in relation and expectancy. So to abide in the Lord means you're staying in a place that is a specific state of mind and an expectancy. That's our part of the abide. See, it's, it's two part. You just read the word. It's two part. He chose to abide here in us. But we have to choose to stay in it. To stay in place to stay in relation, to remain, and here's the other words, to continue, to dwell, to endure, be present, remain, to stand, to tarry, to wait for it. Are we doing those things? Are we? Question is, are we willing to stay in an abiding place? So I liken it to this tea bag, and let me tell you why I've got some tea here. Let me try not to make too big of a mess. So we're kind of like this, this tea cup. We're like this tea bag, you know, we, we're like this cup of tea. Holy Spirit and circumstances kind of combine their efforts towards us and we have this abiding place that we have to be in. We have to just keep hanging out here, just like this tea. Because this tea, it takes a little time. It's not going to be ready 
as soon as I pour the water on it, it's going to have to abide in the water. It's going to have to remain stable in a place in order that the good that's in it begins to get drawn out. There's an abiding that has to take place in order for the good that God has deposited inside of you to get drawn out in its fullness and its nutrients. But it's hard to do those things. It's hard to stay good all the time. My husband was born good. I just tell you he was. He's just born nice. He's just the nicest guy. I don't even know why he wanted to ever hang out with me. Because I wasn't born nice. You know, some people just born nice. I was just born just mean and sassy. The Holy Spirit has done a, a really good work. And I'm grateful for my husband who chose to stick it out with me in his niceness because his tea seemed to steep a little bit better and faster than mine. <laughs> it's taken me a little bit. My husband had taken a lot of hot water. I had a lot of hot water that's had to be poured on in order for the good to come out. Does anybody know about that? Anybody but me? Okay. So then, then let, let's keep going about some tea. So not all tea is created the same. This is what's interesting to me. There's steeping techniques are going to differ depending on the type of tea that you brew. Going, hmm. So I'm like, okay, Lord, different types of tea. I get you, I get you. So here's the thing about what I have to, to realize. That my tea, what I got going on, doesn't have to look like Miss Sarah's back here. Sarah's got some good tea. I see you. <laughs> it doesn't have to look like their tea. My process doesn't have to look like their process. And you know what happens when we get into comparing? We just prolong our process. We stay someplace too long. And oh my goodness, I hate for us to stay someplace too long. I hate for us to be where we're looking at somebody else's tea too long that we forget about our tea. And then here's something interesting about tea. When you pour that on there and you put the bag in it, this saucer, we think it's meant for it to hold the cup and look cute. Actually, when you put that tea bag in the hot water, it's going to do its best work when it gets hidden. It's going to be so good because you put that on there and all that steam just settles on in. It doesn't get cold. The temperature and the atmosphere just does its thing so good. And that tea just does its thing and, 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 and it gets to hang out there all by itself. Interesting. I'm like, okay, Lord. I've been hanging out in these spots before. A little too long, I thought. So then I got fussy. Any of you ever got fussy? Y'all know what fussy is? Yeah. Okay. So I'm hanging out, and I'm, I'm fussy. I'm wanting the lid off. I'm ready. I'm ready. So now I've got everything coming in at me. Because now I, I, I'm not covered because I've put myself in that place. Because I'm tired of waiting. I'm going to sit here, and, and unlike my Pakistan sisters who are going to wait and pray, I'm going to wait and I'm going to say, oh, I'm waiting on the Lord. And the whole time I'm complaining on the Lord. Help me, Lord. Because, see, when we operate in complaining, we are grieving the Spirit of God. And that anointing that has been deposited on the inside of us, you see what happens is we're taking too long to let it do its perfect work. And there's something that happens whenever this tea bag settles in 
too long. The longer this little tea bag goes past its timeline, you can sip it. Mm. It's bitter. It gets bitter. We can get into a place where we move outside of his timeline for us. We, things become prolonged because we've positioned ourselves wrong. We've not settled into abiding, but we've, we've preferred pleasure over his presence. We've pre- preferred a preference of how we want it to look over his presence. And we prefer our time over abide. I'm speaking only from an experience because we've all been there when waiting was just too hard. Just too hard. And you know what we begin to do? We begin to put our mouth on everything. We put our mouth on it and we just are telling it all, right? So we take our tea and we're going to tell everybody. So we're going to go over here to Sister Susie's house and we're going to talk to her about our tea. We're going to be like, you know what? I know God has called me for something and I know I'm supposed to be doing this and this and this. And then we're telling all the secrets that the Lord has been teaching us even in the secret place that he ain't said to tell it yet. It's not ripe, it's not ready, and it's not ready for you to share. We can't keep a secret with the Holy Ghost. And then another thing is we think every time we get a revelation, we got to tell it too. And so we're just doing this with the tea bag. We just like this. I better put this down. Gently. Those are new. So I'm just going to talk real loud now, and I'm going to tell you all about this tea. So then what we do is we just dabbling in our tea. We're lifting it up and down, up and down. We're in and out. Some of us, that's what we do. We're in and out. We're like, yeah, I'm good today, but I ain't tomorrow. I'm good and I'm in. I'm all in right now. And we're just making this mess. And we're just telling everybody about all of our dilemmas and all of our struggles and all of our stuff. And we just ain't abiding in the presence of the Lord at all. We're messy. We're messy. Here's what happens with messy. I got this mess and now I'm going to say, Shirley, hey, Shirley, won't you come and hang out with me? And, and Shirley, I, I think we need to go to lunch. Shirley, let's talk and we, we're going to go have some tea. And then what happens? You know what she's left doing? I've done made a mess that she's got to clean up. Because my spiritual friend knows that I need some help. So I've done made a mess that she has to contend with. (laughs) So let me tell you, um, let me tell on myself, because, you know, I just have to tell on myself. And I'm like, well, why did I tell that? So I was looking at my husband um, this week, and he had said something to me, and it was, like, very discerning. And I was, like, looking at him like, okay. Like, he's been on a kick, like a good kick. I've been praying for that kick. So I was just being so nice. I was getting ready for bed. My husband's over there laying in the bed, covered up to sleep. He's looking so precious. And I was like, Lord, thank you so much. For It just seems like he's really had a spiritual awakening. He's really have, has some things to say. Oh, my gosh, I hate telling this on myself. The Lord said, he always had something to say. But you were too busy talking and he couldn't get a word in. Oh my gosh. I cannot even. Listen, does he talk to anybody else like that but me? 
Thank you, Lynn Mary. Oh my gosh. I was like, that's so true. Listen, I said, that is so true. How many times we pray and we pray and we pray, but we can't shut up and quit saying, saying, say something? How many times that we know that we want to see God move in our family's lives? We want to see people move, move into the presence of God. We want to see them doing, doing, doing. But all we can do is keep talking. See, what we're doing, we move from abiding to jumping out trying to fix it ourselves. And I'm going to tell you what, Holy Ghost doesn't need your help. He doesn't need me today to tell you this. Because you know what? You'll get it some other way. He chose to have me speak a word, and I'm grateful for the opportunity. But he doesn't need all the help from you that you think he does. He doesn't need for you to always have a word. He don't need for you to always be teaching somebody something and telling them all that you know out of the word. Sometimes you know what people need? For you to sit with them. Look at them. Say, hey, Barbara, how is your life going? What's going on with you, Barbara? And then be quiet. You don't even have to say something next. You don't even have to compare and, and, and one-up them. You don't. But oftentimes, we miss it, the things that's causing us to lose out, to lose out on our victories. Let's go to, I got another scripture for you, John chapter 15, verse 7. Is this too hard on the first night? Listen, I, I'm just trying to, to get everybody together if the Lord's going to make me get it together. It's like, come on now. No, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I want the Lord to help me out. Don't leave me in a whole mess, looking a mess, thinking I've got it together, deceived. No. No. Tell me, God. Search my heart. Know my ways. There be anything in me that is unclean. I ask for the Holy Ghost flashlight to shine in. Nothing hidden. Uncover it all, Lord. We ain't got that kind of time to make those kind of messes for people to have to work around us all the time making excuses for us because our behavior hadn't lined up to most of Christianity. It's time. I guarantee you, there, if there's any baby Christians in this room, I highly doubt it. I think this is a mature group of women. And as a mature group of women, it's time for us to rise up and lead the next generation. And you're going to lead them. Oh, yeah, you're leading somebody. But how are you leading them? Because the thing about it is about leading is this. You're leading someone. You just may be leading them poorly but you're still leading them poorly. You're still leading them in a ditch. They're looking at you. What are you where are you showing them? Where are you taking them? Father, help us to t go higher. Help us to, to, to level up. Help us, God. Expose me to me. Expose me to me. Chapter 15, verse 7. It says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. That is so simple and so powerful. If you abide in me, there's that abiding, and my word, this book, abides in you. That's, that's an if. He says, then. Amen. Then, when you ask, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. 
you're going to get what you ask for whenever you abide in me and I abide in you. Is that not simple enough to keep me in a place of knowing that I can't be so easily moved into from spiritual Christian to carnality? Since I went there, let's go to Romans chapter 8. If y'all ever need to be like lined up, read Romans chapter 8. I tell you what, it'll, it'll build you up, whip you down, and build you back up again, all in the same. I mean, it's like boom, boom, boom. Chapter 8, verse 9. Let's start there. I actually wouldn't mind to have read that in the... I have it in two different versions here, so let me, let me, let me flip over here. Y'all, y'all, we're just teaching. Is that good? Is that good? Y'all, are y'all, is this helping you? Is this helping us any? All right. Okay, so let's start with actually Romans chapter 5, or verse 5, I'm sorry, and 8. Chapter 8, verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh... Set their minds on the things of the flesh. For those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So those who are in the flesh cannot please God. How important is, you, is it for you to be right? How important is it for you to be right? How important is it for you to have the last say in the arguments? How important is it for you to have that, again, that preference and have it your way? How important is it? There's a story of a great man by the name of Smith Wigglesworth who we all, if you were in Christianity, you may have heard the name. Big evangelist, yes. And he, he rocked the world with the gospel. But this man was a terrible person before Christ. Like, he was like me. He wasn't born nice. He was so mean to his wife, and some of you may have heard this story that he was so mean to her because she was a Christian and she went to church that one night he told her that if you go to that church, when you come home, this door is going to be locked and you're not getting in. She went to church. She came to her house. The door was locked. He would not let her in, and she stayed out on the porch all night long. So when he woke up the next morning, he went, out to, he went to the door, opened the door. There she was. She gets up and she asks him, how's he doing? And would he like some breakfast? I'm not so sure that would have been my approach. I feel like... <laughs> Look at Karima. Jose, don't try it. <laughs> You ain't getting no bacon and eggs, buddy. <laughs> Listen. That's a pure demonstration of someone who is living to the Spirit. That is a pure demonstration of someone who is partnered with the Holy Ghost. That is a pure demonstration of someone who doesn't live out of the soul, but lives to the Spirit. That's a pure demonstration of someone who is not led by their emotions and their own will and what their own mind can conjure up a whole big story. Because I'm going to tell you what, that narrative wouldn't even look like that if it was Marlena Hollis. I'm be like, I don't know what you're thinking, bud. And that's how you guys responded. But I'm here to tell you, if you do the hard things and you are led by the Spirit, you're going to be the person that really lives when it says love keeps no record of wrong. I don't think we understand that concept. That means that you are living as a spirit-filled, spirit-led follower of Jesus. And you're doing the things 
that are not preference, you're doing the things that's going to cultivate his presence. You're, you're living a life that says, I don't need it to be my way. I need it to be his way so that his way is established in my life. And I see miracles. You're going to see miracles if you live like that. I promise you, you will. You're going to see your husband, your kids, your, your boss, your coworkers. You're going to see differences happen within their life. You know what? I wonder how long that lady prayed. And then look how bad it got before it got good. But when you abide, you're willing to wait. When you abide, you're willing to wait with an expectation and a trust in the Word of God because you have a deep seated knowing because of the abiding anointing in you to know that he will do it. Not if he will do it, he will do it. You begin to claim the promises of God and you won't let anything shake you when you are abiding in that anointing. See, the abiding anointing is the power of God to fill you with boldness and courage and the ability to live like Jesus on the earth. Because it's not going to get any easier, so we've got to abide. We've got to know that as He leads our lives, that He's not missing it when He leads you to do the hard things. You've got to understand that his preference for you is his presence and his presence is what's going to get you to a state of being so that peace isn't a problem to always have. Because you will know how to tap into that fountain of living water that is inside of you. And when you're thirsty, you're not going to have to hunt up a word because you have the abiding anointing inside of you. And you're going to know how to stir it up. We need to be women of God who know how to stir it up to stir up the gift of God inside of us, to pray in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to ask y'all a question. How many of you was the last time that you prayed in the Holy Ghost, that you activated that gift of God in your life? It's time. I was having this amazing conversation with Eric, and I took him to the book of Jude. I'm going to take you guys there too. I feel like that was on time, Eric. You, you, got, it. you, you, you got the help. So the book of Jude... And let me even find it. Okay, there it is. It's like one page, so it, you know, hidden in there. Okay, so let's, let's start. I'm going to start with verse 16 because it'll help us a little here, don't you think? These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lust. And they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But, beloved... Remember the words which were spoken before by the apostle of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last times who would walk according to their own ungodly lust. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the spirit. Not having the spirit. But it's been established we have the spirit of God. So we cannot act in a grumbling spirit. We can't operate as a complainer. We must stop the works of the flesh that looks like preference over presence. We must stop it. He said, but you, beloved, verse 20, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Holy Spirit. I cannot tell you the importance of praying in the Holy Spirit. To get deep down on your face in the floor, when you start feeling this unsettled, let me tell you something. If you've got some anxiety, anxiousness, you know what that is? That's your emotion sending you off a red beacon light, flashing light saying, warning, 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 go pray. Go pray. The best antidote for anxiety depression, and all of that that would afflict your mind is praying in the Holy Ghost. 
You don't need a pill or a tablet when you go praying in the Holy Ghost. How do I know? Read my book. I dealt with anxiety as a young teenage girl. Then I began to get peace as I come in to know Jesus, and then that thing tried to keep coming back. And so now, here's what I've learned. Whenever I start sensing that, I'm like, oh, I got to go to my prayer closet. I got to go. I got to go because God is wanting to talk to me. Because now I recognize that I need to get something that is inside of me, that that abiding anointing is jostling it around because it doesn't fit inside the abiding anointing presence of the Holy Spirit inside of me. It's like sand that has to come out because it doesn't settle. It's got to go. I need to have, he needs to be comfortable in his space that he dwells and lives in me. And when there's something in there that ain't supposed to be in this house, there's the jostling of the spirit inside of you that starts letting you know. It's indicators. You feel like your joy is depleted. That's an indicator. You feel like you're sad and you're depressed. You're feeling isolated. You're feeling lonely. You're feeling, 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 feeling. What you're feeling is an indicator that the Holy Ghost is unsettled inside of your spirit, man, and saying, let's work it out. Let's work it out. There's a wrestling match that most of us have not allowed the Lord to finish. We got to wrestle out ourselves. You want an open heaven? We want to pray about an open heaven? You're not going to get an open heaven until you wrestle. You're going to have to wrestle some things out. Because there's some things inside of us that still ain't right. It's still not what it needs to be. And so you're unsettled. Because that abiding anointing wants to be inside of you operating at full efficiency. Full capacity. So that when you come tap me, what you tap is going to be pure. What starts to come out of me is going to be worth being poured out because I've wrestled me out. I've wrestled out that carnality. I've wrestled out that flesh because I understand that when I don't wrestle out those things, I become in alignment with the enemy. It's what the Word of God says. To be carnally minded is to line up with the enemy of God. But to be spirit, to walk in the spirit, you're going to have peace. You're going to be able to endure the hard seasons like a champ. You're going to be able to be pressed. And what comes out is going to be holy. Because the word says we are to be holy as he is holy. Holy requires a wrestling match. I'm going to have to wrestle me out. And if it means that I have a limp now and there's something different about me, I want you to notice it. I want you to notice that I don't walk the same, I don't talk the same, I don't dress the same because I ask him, what am I to wear today? You ever thought about that? You ever thought that the Holy Ghost has a preference even to what you're watching on TV? Yes. You ever thought that he has a preference on what you're putting in your eye gate and how much time you're spending on your socials? You ever thought that he lives here too? You ever ask him? You ever ask him, how do you like your house? How do you like your dwelling place, Lord? Is it comfortable? Are you settled in? We need to know it. We need to know it. We need to work on his timing. We need to monitor the atmosphere that we let our tea settle in. We don't need to go just everywhere and do just everything with everybody. Sometimes you need to say no and get to your prayer closet. When that still small voice says, don't go, Don't go. Go say what, Lord? This is a deeper group. This group I'm talking to, you. I'm talking to people who want to live 
in the spirit. How do I know that? Because you want to worship like a worshiper. You want to be in the room where, where the presence of God is, feeling the space. But I don't care how many great worship service, services you have. Your soul enjoys it. And it's good to have a healthy soul because you want to be a healthy soul. That's what the Word says, right? I would that you would prosper just as your soul prospers. I would that you would be in health and that you're as your soul is. He was speaking to a person who walked in the Spirit. See, we take that scripture and we're like, oh, we are going to be healed. No, no, what he was saying is, I want to speak to your health because I see that you have a healthy soul. And then he is saying, because you have a healthy soul, it's because you abide in me. See, so if you want things to go right, you want those answers to those prayers, we're going to have to learn that abiding in him is the most important part. Ask him what he wants. Let him stir you back up. This is a weekend where I want you to get stirred up in the Holy Ghost. Some of you need a fresh baptism. You need a fresh baptism. It's been a minute. There's some of you that you are in a transition season and you don't know it yet. I'm speaking a prophetic word right now and I want somebody to catch it. Some of you are in a transition season and you need a new prayer language to get you there. That's for someone. You need a new prayer language and God's here today and he wants to give you a new tongue because you need to speak into the spirit realm from the utterance of the Holy Ghost out of you and you need to be praying something out and there's a new tongue that you need to get you to where you need to be going. You've been in an old tongue and you can recite it like you, you could recite the alphabet and God says, we're going to put a new tongue in you, one that you don't know that now you have to have a new faith and trust to operate and to pray in the spirit with. We get accustomed. We get used to and comfortable with the presence of God. And he says, I don't want you comfortable. I want to be comfortable because then I'm going to move all in and over you. And you're going to see some things happening. And you're going to change some people's lives. You're going to be a mover and a shaker in the kingdom. Amen. 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 All right. I'm going to bring up some music. And we're going to get into a place. I'm just going to put a pause here. My, just For everybody, just get into a mind of prayer. This is our first night in sacred spaces. And this first night, I've put a heavy word out. But I want us to do a, a self-checkup. If you know when I said you need to wrestle out you. See, I'm going to say something to you. We think we're always dealing with an enemy attack. You're not dealing with an enemy attack. You have not quit wrestling with you. We always want to blame something on the enemy. Oh, the enemy's giving me such a hard time. You know what he's doing when you say that? He's like, oh, thank you for talking about me. Thank you. He loves it. You empower the enemy. Let me tell you, what you have to do, you get to stop being so devil-focused, and you need to be self-reflective. You need to say, Lord, what is it in me that would allow, if it is the enemy, what is it in me that is allowing space for the enemy to come stick his slew foot in? What is it that I'm allowing because I've not allowed you to wrestle out a carnal space? Because it's the carnal spaces in your life that's giving way to the enemy. And that's the alliance with the enemy. To be carnally minded is to be an enemy with God. Those carnal spaces, I don't have to give you a laundry list. You know what it looks like. You know it's the things that you tolerate about you because you say, that's just me. That's just how I am. Don't come at me. You come at me, I'm going to tell you something. And And... The enemy's like, yeah, yeah, I'm, let me help you. Let me give you some great ideas. Partnered with the enemy. 
And now you have blocked the blessings. You, you've blocked the protection. I'm gonna go a step further since I'm just putting it out here. We deal with the things that we won't do out of fear. And we let fear hold us hostage. And then in fear, we deal with health issues. In fear, we deal with mental problems and issues. Because fear has settled in somewhere in us. And I'm going to say this with kindness and say this. It's a challenge sometimes. You have symptoms or you have situations that they're showing up and they look a certain way. It's hard not to focus on the details and to, to look in faith sometimes. It is, especially when it's like right there at you. It's like, how do you not notice that when you, when you go home that your husband just, you know, cussed at you or, or, or your kids just are a, are a whole wreck? How do you not deal with those details and you deal in faith and trust God? It's hard. What comes out of your mouth either aligns with faith or it aligns with the enemy. It starts there. It starts with if you're spilling the tea. It starts there. We got to tidy up. We've got to tidy up. And we've got to know that his word says, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, you ask and you will receive it because you're asking in faith. You're aligning with the word of God and you're operating out of the spirit. You're going to see your life change. We've got to tame the tongue and quit spilling tea every direction. We got to allow the spaces in our lives where God wants us to be in the quiet places, that we're not always looking for somebody to counsel with us, but we allow the great counselor, the Holy Spirit, to minister to our deep inner being. I've been in the floor in my closet, shutting the door where my kids hopefully didn't hear me crying out because I'm saying, God, why am I still dealing with this? Why is it that I have prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I'm still dealing with this? And I'm just exhausted from it. I understand, been there. And I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, what do I do? I, I feel like I, I'm in the word, I'm speaking the word over me. So I've got like this checklist. Like I'm, I'm, I go to church, I'm serving, I'm ministering. But then this hits me in my gut. And, and my this was anxiety. And, and days where I woke up and I felt like the world was falling in on me for no reason. And so I'm in the floor and I'm saying, God, I don't know. I don't want to go get medication. I don't want to do that. I want to have faith to believe, but God, I may need to, do I? And I'm asking, do I need medication? Do I not need medication? What do I need? God, I need help. And I'm in the floor of my closet where my kids won't know that mom's in a, in a whole space. Because I don't want to worry them because they worry about mom. You know, I've had some health things that happened and they were, they watched it all and they've watched me be slandered all over Facebook and they've watched people in town turn their back on me and stop that. <laughs> Just give me a heart. My kids have seen that. And they've seen mom Try to hold her head up high still and be strong. When I didn't feel strong, I felt really hurt. My feelings were hurt, but I didn't want to show it. I didn't want to look like I wasn't operating in faith because I had to be just so-and-so. But the fact is I was really <coughs> broken. I was very broken. 
because it, it hurts when you're in those spaces. It seemed like I was having the ultimate Job trial of sorts and I was just thankful that my kids were healthy and well. Even my marriage was struggling. It was just like all of it. Abigail was going through something that was so hard for this mom that was gut-wrenching. All of my kids were really going through it because we were going through it. It was so hard. But I'm gonna tell you, my closet, my sacred space. When the lid was on my tea, that's where I found that's where I found the healing I needed. That's where I found the strength to do what I'm doing today. It, it's, it's where I could get up, face whatever the next challenge was. Summer Hall can speak to it. My, my parents, my, my moms, both of them are here and they watched me go through that really hard season. And they were praying for me. So it looked like I should be good to go. I'd go and preach a sermon on Sunday morning because I had a church. Then I'd go to the back door and I'd go sit in the little office space that I had and I'd shut the door and I'd fight the anxiety and the tears. It was a reality for a long time but it wasn't the truth. Because the truth of God's word says that I am an overcomer. The truth of the word says that Jesus gave me peace. The truth of the word says that I've not been given the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And, and those truths held me but I had to go wrestle me. See, I could pray for the healing, but I had to wrestle me to get the things that were deep rooted out. That took the hard places to be exposed that I had covered by self um, preservation and protection for years. See, I'm wondering, why is it bothering me so bad that these people are coming at me? And why is it that this keeps going like in this cycle? It's because I wasn't facing a new devil. I was facing the same one that had not yet been conquered. See, you wonder why you're dealing with something again and again and again. It's because you've not conquered what has caused that it's the same devil different people different voices looks a little different same foul spirit but here's the thing why is it getting to still be there that's the question we got to ask why does that thing have permission to still hang out with me because that's that's what it is there's a carnal place in you that lines up with the enemy that has said, you have space here. The devil, that demonic entity, has space in your life because you haven't wrestled out that flesh space. I'm in my closet floor and I'm asking God, what is it, God? Finally, I said, whatever you need to show me. I don't care how hard it is. I don't care how painful it is. Show me. I've got to be healed and finally victorious over this. I can't get up every day wrestling out this feeling, this anxiety. I can't keep doing it. So we begin to roll back in my mind the things that I've hidden, not even knowing it. 
there's spaces that could be hidden that you don't even know because you've so far removed your thoughts away from it that you quit noticing it that it was there that it's almost non-existent but it's still there it's still allowing opportunity this is your time this weekend to ask the lord expose me to me